What's up, guys? This is Marcus Huskins, and I'd just like to take a second to welcome you to the Studio One 3.5 Update Explained course. So I spent a lot of time talking about the new native low latency monitoring options that we have in 3.5. And I had a pretty good example when dealing with virtual instruments of how efficient it is to be able to track with the virtual instrument native low latency monitoring. But what I thought I would do is give you an example of kind of the performance improvements that we see when moving from Studio One 3.3.4 to 3.5. And I'm gonna use the exact same example that I did in my virtual instrument low latency monitoring video, which is a track that was used in the Groove 3 Vocal Production Masterclass. Now, I've already gone ahead and booted up 3.3.4 and I ran a quick screen cap video that showed what was happening to my CPU usage if I tried to do a punch-in using software monitoring on Studio One version 3.3.4. And as you'll be able to see, it's pretty bad. We've got a lot of dropouts, tons of clicks and pops. The CPU is flying all over the place. And I really wasn't able to do anything that I would consider to be reliable in terms of punching in a vocal after the fact in a song that's already mixed, produced, tracked out, and has a lot of plugins in place. So what I thought we'd do now is we take the exact same session, I've opened it and done a save as in Studio One 3.5, and essentially all I've done over here is I've just brought in a new track. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the performance monitor over here. We don't need to see the devices, that's fine. But what I wanna do is just kinda show how efficient this new audio engine is. Let's go ahead and open up our audio device settings. I'm gonna set my device block size to 32. My processing, I'm gonna leave my dropout protection set to high. Hopefully that'll be good. Again, 2.67 milliseconds of round trip latency at this setting. Go ahead and click okay. And the last thing I need to do is just enable my native low latency monitoring. Now, before I go ahead and push play, and show you how reliable this is now and how possible it is now in 3.5, I'm gonna go ahead and run the 3.3.4 video. All right, let's give this a shot. All right, so as you can see, really, really difficult to get anything close to reliable performance. Let's take the exact same track and let's start from the exact same position, which would be right on this downbeat over here. And what I'm gonna do is open up the mixer for a quick second. Let's record enable this track. Okay, so now I'm monitoring and I'm monitoring through the native low latency audio engine. And I'm not gonna sing and I'm gonna be doing you a favor by not singing but I'm just gonna go ahead and talk over top of this track while I'm playing. And I want you to keep your eye on the CPU meter. So I'm gonna go ahead and monitor enable this track so that you can hear me as I'm talking over top of this. So I'm talking over top of this track now. I'm talking, I'm at an audio device block size of 32. I have a round trip latency of 2.67 milliseconds. And my CPU is pretty solid at 18%. I'm not getting any glitches. My CPU isn't flying all over the place. And if I was to record something, I could easily record something the exact same way. So now I'm gonna pop into record mode and I'm literally talking over top of a fully mixed and tracked out session with my CPU at 18%. I'm not getting any device dropouts. I'm not getting any glitches, no clicks and pops. So that's just an example on my system, which is a 2015 MacBook Pro, that's an example of the efficiency and the increase in optimization that we see with the new native low latency monitoring. I'll catch you in the next video.